what I'm actually going to do for this video is I'm going to do something a little bit different. So I just want you to pay attention to what I'm doing right here. Because I want to talk about Mars. And Mars is a sign that is all about acting and taking action. It's a planet that rules that sign. And I'm standing up today because I just want to show you and take you through um, an assortment of a variety of objects. So I do want you to just pay attention today. Oh, this is probably one of the highlights of my day, doing these videos. So I'm going to introduce just a random assortment of objects and sort of tie them into what I might be speaking about. So Mars is all about action, the action principle, like let's make things happen. Such as grinding your coffee, as you can see here. And so this coffee grind is a roast classic decaf with ground coffees. Aries is all about waking up in the morning and getting going. A stooge of Dantadini. Now, I have a friend from um, Chesterfield who every single day comes up in the morning with this. And tells me, oh, you will not believe what happened. I have no coffee. And she is absolutely addicted to coffee. And I remember one morning we were walking around. And she was telling me, I got this classic brand. Have you tried it? And I was like, no, I haven't. Why? She asked. Well, it's so bitter. Oh, well, coffee's bitter. But it wakes you up in the morning. Uh, then I said, I have decaf. Then she said, I never have decaf. That's how pumped up she is. She wants to keep her energy level high. So she uses this blend of coffee. Roast classic decaf. Buy it in the whole store of foods. <laughs> Now, the other little object, see if I can find anything else, is this alarm. Now, I have a fear of alarms. I have a fear of alarm clocks. I do. Believe me, I do. I truly, when I hear an alarm, it scares the living daylights out of me. This thing can go off in the kitchen sometimes when uh, toast is burning, when there's something steaming up, whatever the reason may be, and it scares me to death. Because it's so startling. I mean, if I go into a hotel room and I see a fire alarm on the wall staring back at me like a red fire alarm, not this, but a red fire, fire alarm, that's very scary because I'm seeing it and it's looking back at me and it could go off. Um, and um, thank goodness I did not have that experience at Wisconsin Dells. That was a sickening experience that I had. I mean, 2018 Wisconsin Dells. You want to know what happened? Okay, here's what happened. Let me just give you the kind of the um, pity that this camera can't turn another direction. If only I could unplug the computer. Well, anyway, let me tell you what happened. So, my family and I were coming back from a really long trip in Wisconsin, eating a lot, seeing family, doing all the things. That day, I was uh, feeling uh, sick of eating, um, and I was very tired and worn down. And so, the next day, 
I mean, you can question also, just areas of listening to is intuition. That's another question, because let me tell you, that next day, I was feeling awful. I didn't feel like going swimming. I didn't feel like it. And of course, I did, because we got all the stuff together, and, you know, why not? So, we did. We went there. I had the nervous feeling of all, uh, always with the smell of chlorine in the pool. And uh, I ended up going down the slide. And had a horrific experience. And yeah, it, it wasn't right, so I could go on and on. But just suffice that to say, this alarm comes from an old Chester mill that says I-85 on the label. That would be five, and we know that five is a number that does not do small, that does not do quiet, that doesn't do lukewarm. It's loud, it's hot, it's a party, it's drama, it's no dull moments. That's five. And so, you may not get to sleep in a five house, or a five room, or this kind of a thing may go off house or five room. But this actually comes from a five factory in numerology. Isn't that fascinating? Isn't that coincidental? Because five is a number of, I don't even know what. Let me tell you a story. When I was in the spring of 2018, I had yet another horrific experience with a fire alarm. I mean, it's reasonable to advise people and tell them that, oh, there's going to be a fire drill beforehand. Those fire alarms were loud. At least the weather was really nice and it was springtime. So that I had going for me. But this represents the fire of Mars, the noise of Mars, the intensity of Mars in sound meaning. So that's another theme for 2023. Let me just tell you that. So we have the coffee, and I just want to show you this because it's just who is using my tray. Let me just show you this here. I'm just going to set this down and just show you a little setup. Because there is this... Um, Quinn comes with Virgo, and you need a good setup, a nice organized setup here. So we have the, oh my goodness, can I get this to go, okay, so you see the coffee blend that I have, if you can, okay, here we go. Now, I have this assortment of coffee, you see here, I have my cup, I have my napkin, which is dirty, so that needs to be thrown away in the trash. There we go. A clean napkin and the coffee maker. Now what I'm going to do with this is very simple. I have my coffee maker. I am basically going to pour and redistribute that. I don't want to do that because otherwise that would not be a good thing, would it? Believe it or not, Aries and Mars deal with the law. I mean, they deal with the law. I mean, it's a right or wrong fair deal. The law is that if I were to take this coffee and pour it back, ah, that's not a good thing. What's inside the coffee maker? 
Well, I don't know if you can see it. Let me rearrange this. I'm trying to vary how I do these videos so that they're not boring and dull bland in. So you see that here, let me um, just rearrange this here so that you can get a good look at the coffee maker. This coffee maker comes from the Shooter Factory, and it's a very um, prosperous factory for coffee makers. And the interesting thing about this coffee maker, this is a this was a grant from um, the Polkish Foundation, and so the original owner and creator of the coffee maker wanted to put it in gold stamp, wanted to put letters in gold stamp saying. I want this coffee maker to be in the hands of somebody with Neptune in the tent. The reason behind that is because this is not the kind of coffee maker that you want to find in a professional workplace. If we know anything about Neptune in the tent, it's very likely that Neptune in the tent is a placement where the people born with it have low grade jobs. And that person said, guess what? I'm not going to go to a penthouse. I'm not going to go to a city. I'm not going to go to a major company and find this sitting there. Nor with any racial activities going on. That mathematician's movie. But anyway, I'm not going to find it there. This isn't appropriate for that setting because it's not grand yet, because it's a cheap coffee maker. And I would say that the room that I'm looking at has and contains a lot of cheap stuff. Now, looking in the coffee maker, I don't know if you can see that, but there is a coffee holder in the maker. See that? Does it look clean or dirty? Those coffee grounds. Basic lesson in coffee. Coffee grounds make up coffee. With what you know, you add liquid to it and do all that. And I want to introduce to you a joke and reason here. And I have to bring this up. I brought this up years ago and I'm gonna do it again. The pood milk. I mean, what is the deal with Putna? Let me just move this to the side here. Let me tell you about the Putna. This is a region in northern Joka that specializes in all things grains, uh, rice, um, flowers, fruits, any, like, like, so. I mean, you can find it, you know, it's like a symphony of fresh, organic ingredients can be found in this region. And so it's a very popular tourist attraction as well. And something that they specialize in is their unique, and, you know, this started, you know, actually up very recently in summer of 2017, they got together with a board and said, we're going to map this out a little bit more and put coffee grounds on the list. You know, not that they're desperate for ingredients and, you know, low-grade and limiting themselves. However, they're going to upgrade their coffee grounds. And what they've decided to upgrade the coffee grounds to is a fine black Powder, almost like a charcoal blend. And what they decided to do with this blend, they have decided to make it a masa a la panjada a mana, which means a treasure for the seashell ice sea. Because if you think about it, you know, there's no you know references to coffee on the marine oceans. But the coffee grounds are small, they're effective, they're bitter, and you can find this in the 
mills. You can find this in the market, and, and you, you can buy it for, you know, five dollars a piece and take it home and put it into a coffee maker, um, sprinkle it on top of your desserts, uh, cheesecake, etc., as long as you don't ruin the eater's palate. And we all know that we don't want to ruin palates, don't we? No, we don't. So, that's that little bit uh, um, about coffee there. Going back to the setup. So, we have the coffee maker. We have the little... And the other thing, you see one of those styrofoam uh, bowls in there. And that's a very cheap, like a popcorn bowl for... You know, now I remember, um, actually, and, you know, I'll tell you why I'm alluding to this. Years ago, when I used to do all st fun stuff, so this was years, years and years ago when I used to, you know, we used to do events, we used to, uh, I don't you know, when I say events, I mean pretend stuff. So, for instance, I, I wish I could show you the piano. There was a um, cardboard box, cardboard setup built around the piano. So you have one small piece of cardboard winding the middle would be a bigger, longer piece of cardboard. And then the other side would have, that again, the smaller piece of cardboard. That's how I saw it, and that's how I wanted it, because in the night previous to that, I had a dream about... Uh, um, uh, piano area um of course it's not up now but it would be neat if that was there again um so that was one of the things i um i also played piano and then you know we'd get guests and there would be a table in the closet and then they would pretend to okay well here's some food you can sit down and listen to music we never did a movie occasion, although I did film a couple shows and maybe a movie or two, but, you know, we never did, like, a movie. Oh, my goodness me. If I could just take me back to that time, you know, oh, my goodness, things would be so different. Um, anyway, uh, it would be fun if those days would repeat, repeat themselves, but, no, not going to happen. But, so, I'm reminded of this. I'm reminded of, you know, just simply making popcorn, putting it in these bowls to represent a cheap occasion, putting on an event, you're eating snacks, etc., downstairs in the basement in the privacy of your house, and, you know, pretending. And, oh, I was kind of a boss back then in the day. But, um, it has coffee grounds in it. Representing two different times in history, when I spoke about the Poon Mill back in 2015 and before then, when I did these events. Now, well, anyway, that's a random reference. But this is the coffee maker. Basically, the tools are pretty standard. The you know whatever, and then you have your cup of coffee and napkin, of course, to go on there, and then a tray. The setup is very important. Aries likes things a certain way. Mars is like, I'm motivated. I'm motivated to make things a certain way. I'm motivated to do things. And even though if this is a shovel reference, it's still what I can give you. So that is that object here. And I do want to show you something else. And it's actually right here. I do want to turn your attention right here to this painting. You see this? This painting, I'm going to move out of the way here so you can see that. that you know, see um, what I'm pointing to here? This is actually um, a Joan Miro work. Um, and it was created on the 17th of October, 1993. Um, and the, um, excuse me. Through January 11th, 1994, that was when it was housed at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. And then, just like a bucket of old, they stripped it off the walls and they put it in an auction. 
and the donor won the auction, and he was very rich at the time. So this was 1999 that this auction occurred. And so what happened was, and this is another aspect of Mars I'm going to talk about, which will be encompassed this year, particularly around the new moon on April 20th, which is not an eclipse. It is a new moon. I want to make that loud and clear, and that will not be the last time I'll announce that. But this, let me just go back to telling you the story of this. So, here's what happened. The donor was rich. He grew up in a, a very affluent family. And um, his family, um, you know, his mother was very nurturing. His father, well, he was nurturing, but in a... Um, in a sort of, I'm going to take you in small doses way, which was not the best, they did not have the best relationship. But anyway, what happened was, um, this donor set his eye on a Japanese portrait like this. The reason behind the story was that it was stolen. When something is stolen from an area, when somebody hurts it, does anything bad, oh, 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 they're going to get after it. Now, this was stolen. This was stolen. And then it was placed into the museum. I have seen a movie where this has occurred. And it was called Sotor's Legend of the Lost Treasure. And in this movie, basically, the, you know, the characters were looking for a treasure chest. And this pirate um, felt that he had the God-given right to keep this treasure. But he didn't because it was placed in a safe. And then it was shipped off to a museum. And then he got arrested because of him trying to steal it. And the damage that he did to the island of Sotor and Skip. All those kind of things. Point is... This got to the museum. Then the auction occurred. 1999, if I got that date correctly. It was like, um, it was actually um, um, mid-March that it occurred. Around the 18th that it happened. I believe that it was that day of 1999. So, so it was fairly early in the year. And so the auction happened. Um, the bidder was wealthy and testing. And then he bidded high enough. I didn't understand the thing about auctions. I mean, I can call a random number. I can call this 500, 700, 8. So I don't know. But anyway, um, so what happened was he bid it on the object, and lo and behold, he had it. When he got it, he forgot to take it home, so he never saw it again. Then, a friend of a family, a friend of my family, went into the same museum in New York, received this and then had it for about a couple of years up until 2003 and then the friend was like guess what i don't need this thing joking up my house so my family member received this from the friend and then stored it away, put it up on the wall. We moved, put it up on the wall here, and this is how it came about. The real image of this painting is phenomenal. I mean, if you look at the different textures, if you look at the designs of it, very areas, very intense, or very Scorpio. But this, 
red hot fire flame colored hair that's just passionate and burning and 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 hot and bright and bold. It gets your attention. What can be described in this here? If you look, see all the different balloons and see all the different little shapes coming together. There's something called an ink bot where you put a random piece of ink on the paper and then you try, try to guess what shape that it you know looks like for you. There's a lot going on in this painting. I could sit here and describe it, but this is no art analysis. But this represents the race because I have a right to have this. I don't have it. This is what's going on. Black, a lot of stuff flying in the air, free flying arrows wants to be free and independent, and a bunch of stuff. But juxtaposed because it doesn't want to be tied down. And you see things all clustered together, very, very close, in different shapes. Yes. Now, something personal for me is there's a couple balloons here. A couple balloons. Mars rules Aries and Scorpio, remember that. Balloons represents patience, and if the healing goes out of your balloon, you lose patience and tolerance. And then just crashes or pops or whatever. Depends on what kind of balloon it is. This represents the soul. Scorpio is all about the soul, the soul of things. And there's a soul within this portrait because of the eyes and the nose and that kind of formation here. It's very neat in the colors and just popping out. So, thought I'd mention that. This video is getting a little bit long. I'm going to wrap that. Any other objects that I want to talk to you about today? Well, I can't really find any. Except for this. What is this? Hmm. There is no resemblance. All right. How does all of this tie into Aries season? Um, excuse me, Mars in 2023. Mars is going to be moving regularly in 2023, beginning on March 25th. It's going to move into Cancer, then Leo, then Virgo, then Libra, then Scorpio. It's going to finish out in Sag. Those are the signs. Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces. So, you know, you sort of get that pattern there. But anyway, Mars, when it moves in to Cancer, it's about tending to the nest, taking care of your home, you know, being there for your family. Mars and Leo is about, I'm going to be the hero, I'm going to shine, I'm going to be, uh, I could go on and on through the signs, I didn't really want to. But Mars in 2023 makes the trying with Saturn at the end of March. This is in water signs, and this is getting things done. Passion, discipline, doing the hard work, drive, motivation. That's what it's about. Now, Mars. Aries archetype. Now, A-R-E-S archetype. The fiery god in Greek mythology would storm down on people if they did wrong and would be the hero of people if they did wrong. So you can imagine these two um, extremes, and he was the god of war in Greek mythology, participated in the war of Troy and Troja, and all those places, particularly in the Odyssey. He was there for Odysseus like his life depended upon it, and he, st he had a sledgehammer blade, and he just struck everyone in the Trojan city madly, and got them all out decided this is not enough i need to do damage to let people know that fighting is not fighting to let this side know that they will lose so 
you know, there's an extreme. I'm on your side. I'm certainly not on your side. There's a, you know, me, you know, a versus that comes in with theories. Now, Labor is very different. We're not talking about that today. But we're talking about the fact that Mars is red. Now, I don't know why I see the tops of the of the freezer doors and I mean when I think of Mars. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Whenever I say that, I see the free like the top of the freezer doors and I mean. <laughs> I see the silver line, then I see the blood line. That's an important detail because when you're fighting, you do combine. Now, Mars is hot, and Mars is desert, and Mars is dry, and then look at how Mars is now. A sad desert place. So Mars is hanging out. In Gemini right now, it is retrograde. You know the astrological info. But Mars comes in passionately because Mars will be so important. And I'm going to talk about the uh, the new moon on the 20th. This is a powerful new moon that people are talking about, which is not an eclipse. Even though it is, it's not, because I don't believe that it is. I do not believe in eclipses and signs that the nodes are not in. It may be an eclipse. In my mind, it is not an eclipse. I will not put out anything that I don't believe in. So I may have to lie and I may have to fit. Oh, May 19th, a solar eclipse in Taurus. Oh, September 29th, a lunar eclipse in Aries. Less what's going on October 14th, what's going on on May 5th, and on October 28th, that's a full moon in Taurus. I could go on. I, I have spoken about, I've ranted about this, you know, time and time again. But so it occurs at 29 degrees. 29 degrees is the last degree. It's very intense. It's like I've learned all the lessons. And I am rising to the height of the power. It's like you've mastered Aries. You've mastered the fire. And the Aries trait stands so profound and so potent with the all the themes, fighting, passion, you know, myself, my identity, you know, all of that. And so the new moon, wonderful time for manifesting. A wonderful time also to clear up anything from Aries season 2022, 2023, excuse me. April 20th is also the birthday of A.H. And on this day, we, I, I, I mean, okay, this is no funny matter. I mean, the rain will fall on the plains in Spain on this day. Most, that, you know, that's what the predictions say. And there, and there will be planes, there will be the windows of planes, etc. People will be shopping with shopping carts going crazy. But they also will be going inside themselves and reflecting and remembering why I'm here and initiating what I want to initiate and stepping into their authenticity and their identity that's what's going on on April 20th. There's no eclipse happening. It's just a new moon. A powerful new moon at that. But it's not an eclipse. Uh, the same with the 28th of October. That's also a powerful full moon. Not an eclipse. So, that is all I want to say for Mars in 2023. That was a little bit of a different take than usual. But I'll see you on the milky side. Bye for now. <laughs> now, when I say the milky side, I'm going to talk about the moon next. So, tune in for that. And I'll see you when it comes around. But before I forget, I do want to play for you a little bit of a tune here. Before I'm done, this 
really speaks to the inner state of mind very profoundly. And I'm actually going to do it in two different forms today. I'm going to do the tune, so I'm going to do it online, and I'm also going to do it physically. Okay, here we go. So this plays into the tune of Aries. Oh, it's not loud enough? Okay, let me turn it up. Okay, here we go. I'm going to sing to it a little bit, so tune in. Is it, okay, is it lame now? Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. So this is the melody on the piano. It's a little bit different, but a kind of thing. all that I have for you today, people. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.